I'm Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Harry Singh, the Technology Director of Human Protocol. Harry, welcome to the show and thank you for taking the time to come on. Thank you for having me, Ashton. It's a pleasure. You're very welcome. I'd love to kick off our conversation by just hearing a little bit about yourself, how you first got involved in blockchain, uh, your role at Human Protocol, and about Human Protocol, and what are the initiatives that your team is working on? Sure. Uh, that's a very broad question to begin with. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, so yeah, I initially hailed from India. I moved to UK in 2013 to study artificial intelligence and computer science at the University of Edinburgh. Uh, you know, did the whole spiel, four years in Edinburgh, beautiful city. Uh, got exposed to a lot of emerging technologies because Edinburgh is such a center, such a hub uh, mm -hmm. for the emerging tech, especially. Uh, yeah, got together with a few friends, you know, the classic story. We were having beer in university. Someone introduced, you know, have you looked at this coin, uh, Ethereum? And I was like, no, but what's the tech behind it? And suddenly it just got really interesting and I took a deep dive there. Uh, during my time at university, obviously, uh, you know, worked through uh, quite a few startups, a variety of spaces, be it financial tech, be it energy, be it classic, uh, you know, music apps like Spotify. Back then it was quite small. And then by the time I was graduating, I was like, you know what, I need to do something on my own. Of mm -hmm. course, with the exposure to AI and the blockchain side of things as well, I kicked off my own startup called Edger. Now it's called Providence, which initially focused on uh, uh, detecting plagiarism for artists and musicians mm -hmm. online and kind of rewarding them using uh, blockchain and AI. Yeah, so that was a nice thing. Uh, but that track obviously did not go anywhere <laughs> because it turns out it's very hard to impose. Uh, so we kind of took the whole tech out and uh, built something that we decided was, you know, we could see was very important uh, for the industry, which is misinformation detection. So mm -hmm. Provenance now proudly serves over like 50 different clients from news channels to independent media outlets and soon a consumer offering as well, where we detect what could be out of context media placed in a particular news. We do basic fact checking. We try to kind of, you know, take a step beyond it and also evaluate what could be the bias behind this particular piece of misinformation. Mm -hmm. But obviously that company, luckily for me, uh, ran so well that I decided, okay, it's time for me to take a step back <laughs> and try new avenues. And I met one of Human's uh, uh, co-founders and, uh, you know, sounded like an interesting project, something different, uh, real application of core blockchain technology and something I really passionately care about, you know, like mm -hmm. the diversification of jobs across the globe and making jobs accessible for everyone. And I was hooked. And so, yeah, I joined Human Protocol back then, uh, which is almost what, almost coming to two years now. Uh, joined as a software architect, now I serve as the technology director, where under me, we are managing the product, the core tech, some parts of the technical partnerships, the overall ecosystem development and even our marketing efforts. So yeah. Amazing. Thank you for the background, Harry. And yeah, it is great now to with these blockchain organizations, you know, just working with people around the world and around the clock as well. Mm -hmm. You know, blockchain never sleeps. Um, and so it is very exciting. Uh, I would love to dive a little bit more into human protocol. And, you know, I know you're the technology director, maybe you can talk a little bit about the protocol, but also just about the vision of, of the platform. Sure. I mean, I'll keep it simple, right? Like this is my one line spiel for it. It's that uh, essentially we are building decentralized infrastructure that powers dual sided marketplaces where kind of humans and machines can collaborate to solve any fungible task. So now this is a very loaded sentence. <laughs> so let's take it step by step, right? Like. If you look back at early 2010s, uh, we see that there was an emerging trend, a uh, part of the economy that wasn't realized before uh, technology could be at a level, and that is dual-sided marketplaces, right? Which means that there is someone probably on this side of the world, on this side of the city, or you know, not even in the near physical space to you, who wants something done. 
it could be a physical job or it could be uh, you know getting your food delivered if, like or it could be taking you from mm-hmm. one place to the other or it could be someone designing your logos you know sky is the limit on what the person wants done and there is mm-hmm. someone on the opposite side that can deliver that and can deliver that well and so you saw platforms like swiggy uber uber eats all these platforms emerge and these are essentially what dual sided marketplaces are uh so we at human kind of looked and said wait actually there is an abstract level where you can you know all these different platforms have something in common and that is basically a four step process there is a process of job creation there is a process of matching this job to a particular person who can solve it based on their skills availability etc cetera, etc cetera. then there is the work actually being done and the verification of how this work was done and then there is obviously the settlements and the person getting the solution right mm-hmm. and so you abstract it away and suddenly turns out you can do <laughs> you can just create an engine that powers marketplaces like this so say uber was being born today they wouldn't have to go and build out that tech they would just leverage human protocol mm-hmm. to build that platform out and they could just focus on the business development you know really mm-hmm. focusing on their domain expertise in the uh, mobility department focus on the marketing focus on the pr and just drive that uh, funnel of getting the users on both sides and the technology we would handle now why i do this in a decentralized way and not a centralized way right why uh because most of these companies are doing it in a centralized manner well for one thing uh if you are say the driver there or the food delivery person there these companies just because of the way they have control over your profile the centralized manner of control they can just decide not to pay you out or charge you penalties or really call your work obsolete mm-hmm. and uh, should they be doing that should they be the judge to do that no right if you do it in an entirely decentralized permissionless manner we as a protocol that engine the technology engine have no say in <laughs> that part of the process you know and it's mm-hmm. all governed by multiple actors playing in the system in different parts be the oracles be the validators to kind of support and just do that for you and another example i like to highlight as a work of why it's very interesting is you're in vietnam or you know some emerging country do you really trust the banking systems to pay you out in time <laughs> or do you trust an automated software system that you can see in front of you to pay you out in time where you can actually mm-hmm. go within a few minutes and go and spend that uh, money that you've earned so yeah uh, i think that's the protocol in a nutshell definitely great explanation harry and i think you you put the nail uh, you know in the head there on the settlement obviously that's going to be super important uh, if you have that the blockchain there then you don't have to trust the other party to ensure that they're going to pay you or they're going to pay you on time or they're going to pay you enough or uh, you know that the service mm-hmm. th- that they actually did it and they said that it was complete um so obviously that's super important um and i really like how you started off the conversation by just like saying this is going to open a huge door for so many different you know the uber of this of that there's so many service applications mm-hmm. that are being built uh for different industries that are bringing in automation like we've never seen before this is very fascinating uh I- I would love to know a little bit more about where exactly your the team is at with the protocol. You know, are there already other Uber apps running on the technology right now or where is your team at with it? Sure. I mean, uh we kind of have the initial version of the protocol already running on Ethereum mainnet. So this end-to-end process that I just described to you is live and available on the Ethereum mainnet. Uh just because of our existing let's say domain expertise uh we kind of built our own first marketplace on top so you can mm-hmm. call it the human protocol machine learning marketplace and that is thriving with one of our partner projects h capture that utilizes human protocol to uh, deliver captures which not only just stop bots uh but also reward users uh, who are actually participating in that process and that kind of you know so you are having one side of the market base so you wonder like oh capture so what does it serve what purpose does it serve actually captures are used to train advanced machine learning models somewhere so <laughs> we have the suppliers who provide us that 
image labeling and you know fine tuning that they want we are pushing it via captcha through the human app mm-hmm. on the ethereum mainnet where people mm-hmm. can you know solve those captchas and earn money mm-hmm. in a way mm-hmm. and i mean you know we are adding more for uh, tools like captcha on the ml marketplace called cvat which is intel software that's coming soon there's a tool called inception which can help with ml text data labeling but that's going to come quite soon as well mm-hmm. uh but that's kind of what we try to just build on our own we also just created something called the human grants program where we want to go out into the ecosystem develop that ecosystem and say okay if you have an interesting idea an interesting marketplace model that you want to explore you have the domain expertise to deliver that come and apply and we will give you funding between 50 to 250000 dollars and we'll provide you the technical support the business expertise everything and uh, yeah build on top of human so hopefully within in the very near future we're going to see a lot of new interesting marketplaces on us mhm very cool uh, i'm looking forward to that and speaking about applying i'm curious on the matching protocol to have somebody fulfill a job you know there's probably millions of people around the world that could potentially do that job is it just first come first serve or is there algorithms and ai that determines you know who would best be the best person to actually fill this job when they're applying like how does that work sure i mean just first come serve first serve is not a good business model here right <laughs> uh, it's not a technologically sound solution either uh, so actually uh, we use a combination of multiple parameters again not controlled by us their third party actors mm-hmm. who run these various oracles that kind of uh, first determine the earners uh, skill sets you know what they are mm-hmm. specialized in and you know as they keep on doing the jobs that skill set levels are adjusted Mm-hmm. then there is other metrics like their availability their delivery time the quality of their work etc etc that's kind of evaluated by these external oracles and then again adjusted per job that they do we kind of get a rating system there where you know the matching almost becomes stabilized and uh, quite successful mm-hmm. and you know there's penalties in place and then there's other things like you know the amount of hmt for example or any other token that you want to a platform that you hold on that influences as well so it's quite a complex mm-hmm. system but yeah no not first come first serve <laughs> and of course this is machine intelligence coming in as well you know really yeah. optimizing that matching process yeah definitely and you were talking about holding tokens there i know we talked about the settlement you know having it a decentralized system I would love to know about the tokens if there is uh, a human token that will be also involved in whether you hold it or if there's other functionalities in the ecosystem. Sure. I mean, we do have a human token. Uh it's on Ethereum mainnet. We are kind of diversifying into the first EVM compatible side chains right now uh where we have already taken part of that bridge process and etc. Uh and the human token is essentially a utility oriented token right it serves a part in multiple parts of these processes be it for the various oracles validators for settlement it depends on what the uh, creator and what the earner of the job uh, wants to do so it's a lot mm-hmm. of flexibility mm-hmm. uh we just recently actually did a coin list raise which was i think if i'm not wrong the biggest sale by the number of participants or something like this So yeah there's a lot of uh, active community members who are very interested in the growth of the human token and i mean there's more information on the entire tokenomics on our website already as well and you know our papers are out there so if you are curious go and read them <laughs> otherwise it's going to take the whole of uh, a whole amount of time we have here to explain how it is cool <laughs> sounds great <laughs> harry and, and you talked about the grants program there you talked about <clears throat> having accounts where people can build up their reputations and and provide services I, w- I was looking at this ambassador program um are you are you focused on the ambassadorship or are you just looking for uh s- developers service providers everybody to help contribute to the ecosystem sure i mean uh, the ambassadors program is kind of our first foray into 
building those diverse communities that we're looking for, right? Because the earners are just not going to come from, say, even English-speaking countries like, you know, you have the Northern America and you have the Europe. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they should ideally come from all over the world. We are human protocol. And ambassadors are our first educators, creators, uh, moderators, organizers, and campaigners who are going to penetrate those deeply local, maybe even not English-speaking communities mm -hmm. and really help us reach that kind of a crowd. Uh, apart from the ambassador program as well, uh, we have just recently launched uh, the Dev Bounty program. We kind of want to build a healthy community of developers who are actively contributing to the human protocols, development, features, bugs, and really getting rewarded for it. Uh, so, you know, we're utilizing other platforms like Gitcoin, our internal platform mm -hmm. as well. Everything's on GitHub. So, yeah, it's interesting times and we see a lot of traffic coming through these channels. That's great to hear. And <clears throat> maybe you can talk about the roadmap moving forward into 2022. You know, what are the major things that you and your team are looking to deliver out and, and what will we see from human next year? Sure. I think uh, this one fundamental thing that we are very hell bent on, which is uh, demonstrating our utility and actually getting people to work and, you know, uh, create jobs and earn money and all this stuff. So uh, the first foray into this was our human app, which is kind of your one portal to accessing the human protocol as an earner. And you already have, you know, a lot of users coming in and doing different kind of jobs. It's about scaling that on a grand level along yeah. with this i think we realized quite early on that you know just because we are on the ethereum main net sometimes it's <laughs> it's not scalable for a high transaction volume uh, protocol like us so we are pouring into you know deeper partnerships with some of the biggest names you know mm -hmm. elrond solana uh hedera there is a uh, polygon coming up, Avalanche, and we're going to just try and distribute this protocol on to as many networks as possible and getting the rewards of that to the human app to the earners. Uh, another part of this is obviously the ecosystem development. As I said, the ambassador program, the dev bounty program, bug bounty programs are really important to us because the, you know, we need to reach out to those people and we need to get them actively involved in human protocol. We are our foundation at the end of the day and getting the community to run majority parts of it is kind of our goal. Uh, and our focus is going to be a lot on there as well. Very cool. Thank you for that, Harry. And for those ambassadors and, and developers and everybody who's interested in contributing or participating, learning more about Human Protocol, what's the best way for them to get involved? Our website, humanprotocol.org. Uh, go there. There is uh, extensive documentation on, you know, how do you contribute, how do you participate. There's the application process for Ambassador Program Live there. You can go and apply if you are one of those community members who want to build those communities. If you're a developer, there's a Dev Bounty Program. Again, everything is written out there. There's a nice Apply Here button as well. You can click and start working. And of course, there's the Grants Program. So if you're an entrepreneur, an organization, or maybe an individual developer, with a cool idea in your niche space where you have a dominant expertise. Go and apply. We'd love to speak to you and get to know you more. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much for taking the time to come on. I will leave all those human protocol links in the description box below that you mentioned so people can get involved if they'd like. And all the best. Let's follow up in the near future uh, in 2022. And I'd love to hear more about uh, what your team is working on. Thank you, Ashley. Yeah, looking forward to it.